There's some stuff that I'll pain over and, you know, a lot of songs too. I'll write like a lot of lyrics and try it out with a bunch of different things and then eventually come up with some other lyrics. I'm, every once in a while I'll hear some old demos of something that I've worked on and I even forgot that I had totally a whole different set of words for the whole song. Sometimes you just sing a line and it doesn't really mean anything or make much sense, but it just sounds right, you know, like the Beatles or something where it's like, it's just, it just sounds right. The, just the way the vowels and consonants come out of your mouth. My whole thing with lyrics has always been that if you just don't want to write horrible lyrics, if you, if they're not horrible, then the music will give them strength and, and they, they will resonate with people even if they don't mean anything, as long as they're not a drag or offensive or whatever. But at the same time, of course, who doesn't like a really good lyric too? And if I can come up with one of those every now and then to, you know, hold it all together or, or steal one from one of my friends or my wife. To my mind, there isn't like a theme or a, fe a thing that I was going through at that time. But of course there sort of was, you know, um, a lot of stuff I wrote with my wife and like the the album title is uh, something that we both kind of came up with and it was something that we both did when we were kids where we would just decide, okay, I'm going to be perfect from now on. And she kind of had that same feeling growing up and so, and you know, a lot of, a lot, there's a lot of her lyrics and just things that came out of discussions with her that ended up on the record. Yeah, my main memory of um, Velvet Waltz is uh, there's like a vibrato or tremolo guitar going through the whole song. And we had recorded the drums and bass. And so we wanted this tremolo guitar going through it. And we didn't record to a click track. So keeping the, the tremolo to be in sync with the drums and bass was really tricky. And we just had to like piece it together and it took hours of me just playing the guitar and there's just a limited amount of tape space so we couldn't use a bunch of tracks and have a bunch of tracks or playlists or whatever to choose from and or or, or move things around on a computer and line it up it all had to be kind of just done live and for a lot of it um, my good friend Chris Aquino he ran up records and he was in the studio sitting there like turning the knob on the tremolo pedal like trying to keep it in sync with the song This was before digital was really being used to make records. I mean, digital was being used for mastering and like the editing and sequencing and that kind of stuff. But as far as for making, a, make, doing the recording, the multi-tracking, it wasn't really happening back then. I mean, maybe Michael Jackson or someone was starting to do it, but no, that it wasn't. This was, this was the way records were all made at this time. Yeah, recording on the tape was really made this thing really complex. And so a song that's like, you know, twice the length of a regular song doesn't take twice as long to work on. It takes like 10 times as long because you're you have to start sharing these tracks. So so many of these songs have like, you know, the first half of the song, there's a guitar on this track and then the next part, there's some percussion. And then another part of the song, there's another guitar track that's 
totally a different sound and needs to be panned to a different spot and EQ'd differently or whatever, you know? So there's like a lot of like moves that had to be made. And this was the first record that we made that we used a automated mixing board because it was just so complex that things had to be, yeah, every, not every track, but many of the overdub tracks would be like, yeah, guitar in one part, vocal on another part, a backup vocal or something, you know, and something else here, trying to keep that all organized, you know. We have all these pieces of paper with, you know, all these things written on it, trying to keep it all organized, me and Phil both, trying to wrap our brains around what was even there, you know. It's called Velvet Waltz because there's no there's no hi hat on it, and that's like a Velvet Underground thing. And that this was a song to me that was a working title, Velvet Waltz, like unwound in Nirvana. Like it wasn't really a title, and I wanted to change the title, and then just sort of like, oh, I can't think of anything good. That seems all right. Uh, in fact, the the record I, I wanted the record not to have any titles, any song titles and tried to do that and just realized it was going to be too much of a pain in the ass to try to not have any song titles on the record. You know, I was inspired by that Butthole Surfers record, Hairway to Steven, and instead of song titles, it just had pictures on the thing. Like one was some picture, two was another weird picture. I can't remember why I thought that it couldn't be done. Like I was just thinking maybe like for getting played on the radio or you know, for the CD, for a CD, and there had to be something that showed up in the thing. And maybe like, and then I think Butthole Surfers did put names to those songs, you know, or they, I know that they did um, eventually. It's like, I don't know, for some reason, I just thought it was going to be, cause more trouble than it was worth. And just, you know, in a way, it seemed kind of like people would be, think it was annoying and bratty to do that. <laughs> and this is a song again that Brett Netson, you know, plays an epic guitar solo at the end of that really, to me, just makes the song. And a little bit of John McMahon on cello. It's another one that got both of those guys to come turn it into something special. Just nets and ripping. I don't know what he was thinking. Brett, I feel like Brett just came in for a day or two and just flew in and just laid down all his stuff. He laid down a bunch of stuff and then I kind of just picked and chose what I thought was cool from what he laid down. Like he played a lot more than what ended up on the record. I can't think of me playing any wah stuff on this album. I think it might be all him. There might be a thing or two of me, but yeah. Anything that anything that sounds like Jimi Hendrix is is him.